previously on Haunted. Abigail, I think you and James need to haul us back to Greenvale. Why? It's Melissa Black. She's disappeared. We still don't know anything about the long-term effects that this signal thing has on people. The signal is too strong. I've been growing it in my brain since the moment she whispered it in my ear. Carl must be behind the signal somehow. It didn't work out the first time, and so he needs the prism to strengthen it or stabilise the broadcast. Dan, how bad are you hurt? (sighs) He clipped my arm. I know him better than he knows himself. You know, I suddenly can't come up with a funny pun. Oh well. The most important person in the world to me is in danger from the most dangerous man I know. Do you know what that means? No? It means I have nothing left to lose. Haunted, the audio drama. Episode 8 Echoes of the Dead. Part 2 of 4. Written by Jamie Evans. Abigail, here! Take these bed sheets and wedge them under the door. It'll stop the smoke coming in. Dan, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Ah, oh, damn it! I can't get any signal down here. Who are you trying to call? Peterson. He can get the fire crew here. Hang on. What are you doing? Skyping Peterson. Since when did you have Peterson's number? Well, not that it's any of your business, but he's asked me out once. Bloody hell. Sorry, Reverend. It's okay. This is a surprise. Didn't expect to get a call from you, Abigail. Never mind that, Peterson. Oh, um, Dan, what are you doing there? Are you okay? I've been shot. Listen to me. We need police and fire crew on the scene, now! What's happening? Where are you? My mum's church. They can't miss it. The place is on fire. Jesus Christ! Sorry, Reverend. It's okay. Are you guys inside the building? Yes, we're trapped. I'm on it. Do you think they'll get here in time? Who knows? They will. They have to. They... Ah! Abby! Come here! No! Stay away! Oh, my head feels like it's going to explode. What's happening? I don't have long. The thing inside me, it's its too strong. You two need to get out of here. I'm not leaving you. Ah! Then you need to tie me up, like you did to Melissa. We aren't tying you up, not in a building that's on fire. This isn't a discussion to be had, Mum. If it takes hold of me, I will hurt you. Maybe even kill the both of you. Guys! What? Look here, in the ceiling. What is that? It's an old hatch. There used to be a ladder bolted into this wall and it provided another route up into the church. It opens up into the sacristy. When they removed the ladder, did they bother to seal the hatch? I'm afraid I don't know. Okay, it's not that high. Abigail, I'm going to give you a boost. Come here. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Ah! Whoa! You can't lift me with your arm like that. Come here, let me lift you. I'm not going to leave two ladies behind. Cut your macho bullshit. You're the best one to go. Get to your police car and radio for help. Get everyone here that you can. (sighs) Fine. Okay. Here we go. I need a little more height. Don't ask for too much. Listen, I'll be back. Go! This might be it. Don't think like that. We're going to be fine. Dan will come back with the fire department. If we get out of here, I'm going to kill Carl Trevino. No, you won't. Revenge solves nothing. It will make me feel better. No, it won't. I know you. You wouldn't feel any better for killing a man. I think one of the has just collapsed. Damn it! 
What are you doing? I'm emailing James. I just abandoned him at the Para-X convention without saying goodbye. I want him to know that he can't blame himself for this. I don't want him to step backwards. I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. Oi! Abby! Mrs. Corbin! Are they here? Close. I can hear the sirens. Hold on to this if you can. Dan, you genius! The garden hose! I backed the car up against the building. Sorry, Mrs. Corbin. I had to smash a window. I've tied the hose around the tow bar on the car. I'll lift you up. Oh, my. (laughs) We're actually going to get out. I thought you believed anyway. I did, but, (laughs) you know, nice to have confirmation. Here, take the hose. No, you go first. I want to make sure you're out. Mum, I love you, but I am not having this argument. You get out and toss the hose back down for me. I'll be right up. You better be. Okay, start the car, Dan! It's working. Hold tight. I can grab the edge. Stop the car, Dan! Back it up! I'm throwing the hose back down, Abigail. Abigail? No, no, no. No. Abigail, what's wrong? What are you looking at? Leave me alone. Don't leave. Join us in the fire. Join us. Burn with us. Go away! Who is he? Why is he standing over there? Stop it! Stop pointing at me! Abigail, there's there's nobody there. What do you want from me? Dan! Dan, we need help! Stand back, Cheryl. Peterson and the fire crew are here. They'll get her out. I can't leave her. Cheryl, come on! No! Abigail! Abigail! Get away from me! Leave me alone! Alone! Oi! There's a lady trapped in the basement. Get a ladder down there now! Pronto! Abigail! They've got her, Cheryl. Look, there's the ladder now. Oh my God. The church is completely engulfed. I'm so sorry. She's seeing things again, Dan. We, we need to help her. I can't believe I'm the one saying this, but we need James. Listen, Mr. Hunter, call me James. James, I really don't see what you want my help with. I told you already. I left Greenvale three years ago when I accepted my post at the university. And you lied to me about seeing Dr. Halliday since then. But, excuse me? Dr. Halliday, when I met you a few weeks ago and I asked you if you'd seen him since leaving Greenvale, you told me you hadn't. That was a lie. How can you... Because we have a mutual friend who told me. Halliday sought you out roughly ten months ago. He knew you were an audio engineer and he wanted you to do a project for him, didn't he? I assure you, even if he did, I don't just work on projects for free. That's right, you didn't. Halliday had a lot of money from his private practice. How much did he donate to your department? That's what I thought. What did he commission you to design? Lives are at stake here, man! He wanted me to build an electromechanical transducer. Pretend that I'm stupid. It was sort of a transducer. I don't even know what to call it. Did you even bother to look at the work I've been doing recently? You are a professor of audio engineering. Yes, but the project I've been working on for the last three years is a cross-departmental project. I was approached by the research team specifically for my knowledge in the audio field. Crossed with which other departments? Medical and neurosciences. What? This is some sort of medical device you've been building. Our work was based on a similar project that's being carried out over in the States, at the University of California, San Francisco. We're trying to develop a machine that can be connected to a human brain, pick up electromagnetic signals, and transform them into speech. It could allow stroke victims or people with motor neuron disease to speak again. There's nothing insidious about our work, Mr. Hunter. We're helping people. Except selling the experimental devices to a private doctor. He's wasting his time. Even the limited successes we've had we were only able to achieve by using specially designed computers as an intermediary. They pick up the signal from the brain, then focus down and strengthen it before it arrives at the speaker system. Without it, the signal was too scrambled, too broad. It it was clearly there, but we couldn't understand it. The signal? 
I think he's found a way to focus the signal. Professor, in any of your meetings with Dr. Halliday, was there ever another man with him? Yes. I, I never got his name before you ask. A, a slim man with greasy black hair, face like a rat. Yes. Yes, that's right. I built one device for Halliday. I told him that was the only one. I felt sorry for him, you know? I told him I wasn't going to do another, but then he turns up with this weird guy asking for specific modifications. Modifications? He wanted the range of the frequency reduced, a narrower band, meaning he's trying to find something specific. Specific? In our work at the university, we've been using simple electrodes to detect the brain waves. The speech centres of the brain are located fairly close to the surface. Halliday wanted electrodes that pierced deeper into the brain. What for? What could he possibly be trying to achieve? You don't know. No. He's trying to talk to his daughter. His dead daughter. What? She died in Greenvale. That's right. No, she can't have. We looked back at all of the deaths in that town, going back a few years, trying to trace the signal. She didn't go by Halliday. I don't think she and her old man got on that well. She went by her mother's name, Jones. Jones? Yes. I was so sad when it happened. There was news all over town. There was an accident of some sort and she drowned in Victoria Lake. Step on the pedal. We need to get to Greenvale. We need to find James Hunter. I expect he's on his way into town. I need an Amber Alert out on him. If he's found, he's to be brought straight to me. Got it? Is he under arrest? No. We need his help. God damn it. Careful, Dan. What? With the blaspheming. Since when did you care about blasphemy? Since I was standing on the grounds of a church that just burnt to the ground. Oh, whatever. Look, I also want to call out for a man by the name of Carl Trevino. I've texted you a link to a website of his. There's pictures of him on there. Another paranormal author? It's like living in the Twilight Zone, isn't it? According to Abigail, Carl and James were both working together at one point, but had a falling out over the way their research should be used. Oh, I get it. James is like Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this Carl guy's like Darth Vader. What? No, no. Yes, he's Darth Vader. Awesome. Well, I'm on it. How's your arm? It hurts like hell, but considering I could have been barbecued, I'm counting myself lucky. Now get going. Yes, sir. The whole department is going to be on the lookout for Carl. They're also trying to intercept James. James is miles away. What? Abby, come on. James will be here, Abigail. Did you really think he would just stay behind like a good little puppy? Whatever it is you two have, Abby, it's special. We're just friends. I didn't say you weren't. Now, I'm really sorry about this next part. What are you doing? Here, get in the car and crank the radio. Find music on there and start blasting it. Anything to distract you from the signal. Thank you. I barely understand what's going on. God, you and me both. Listen, we need to talk about what's going to happen if Hunter doesn't show up. What do you mean? Abigail is infected by the signal, just like Melissa Black and her friends were. I know. We still don't know where it's coming from or what it is. All we know is Carl Trevino is involved somehow. We do know the effects that this thing has, though. You saw it yourself when Paul attacked you. Yes. Abigail has held on to herself longer than anyone else we know of who has been infected. She's very strong. She's the strongest person I know. But she's running out of time. We need to consider alternate options. You had better not be suggesting that we kill my daughter. No, no, of course I'm not. The only thing we know of that kept someone infected relatively calm was Melissa Black. 
when they put her into the medically induced coma, she lay peacefully in that bed for weeks. I know this isn't ideal. I'll say. But it may be our only option, Mrs Corbyn. James said that putting someone in a coma could mean trapping them in a psychological nightmare. He also said it might not do that. Unfortunately, we just don't know. And we don't have time to wait and find out. I don't want to do that to her. Not if we can avoid it. Then we need to hope not only that he shows up, but that when he does, he knows what to do. Okay, it's done. We're ready to test the machine. What about our receiver? Are you going to cooperate? (laughs) She can't hear you. She's not really even alive at this point. Her mind has shut itself down to protect her from all of the pain. Excellent. There's no room for error. Hurry up and place the prism. My, my, Doctor. Giving the orders now, are we? Please, please, please. I just want to speak to my daughter. Aw, how sweet. If only you'd been such a doting father when she was alive. Mm. Turn on phase one. Turn on the prism. Can you hear me? I'm sorry it's taken me so long. I couldn't get the process quite right. We've been hearing you, but we couldn't understand. I'll just make a small frequency adjustment. It's working, Doctor. Linda! I can't hear you! Let me come closer. Please, please speak to me, Linda. Are you there? We are here. What? Linda, please speak to me. Where are you? Cold. So cold. Dark. Always dark. We want the light and the warmth. Please, what are you saying? What place is this? Where are you? Where is my daughter? Please, I must know. Where did she go when she died? Nowhere. She is here. How can she be somewhere if she's nowhere? There is nothing. Nothing after life but the nowhere. The nothing. No, 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 that that can't... No, no! Struggling a bit, Doctor? What what are you wearing? Oh, you like them? Noise-cancelling headphones. To stop the insanity. Sorry, I forgot to warn you. There's nothing. We will consume the light and the warmth. We will feed on it until your world is left a blackened and empty husk, just like no one. What, what have I done? What have you done? Oh, please. I can hardly take the credit, good doctor. You and Professor Cross, you're very smart. There was nothing wrong with your machine the first time around. That's why the signal has been bleeding out and being picked up by radio receivers in town. That's why it's been driving people mad. The only flaw in your machine was that it wasn't strong enough. Add in the Pythagoras prism and everything is fine. Why? I'm sorry, I I can't really hear you because of the headphones. You're just sort of flapping your mouth like a fish. Anyway, I'm very busy. I have a lot to be getting on with, so I'm afraid, good doctor, I'll have to bid you goodbye. Don't worry, your pain won't last long. You'll bleed out fairly quickly with that wound. Miss Black, it's been a pleasure. Hello? 
Where are you? You're missing all my fun. Carl, what's going on? I know you don't give a damn about letting some man contact his daughter, so what is... Shut up, shut up, shut up. My God, you're like a little terrier or something, aren't you? Yap, 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 yap. I told you where I was going and you still aren't here. That's very, very rude, James. I'm very upset. You're insane. Maybe. Wouldn't be surprising the way we grew up. I noticed you sent your little assistant ahead. That was a pretty cowardly move, James. Abigail, she's there. She's uh, not here right now, no. Right now, uh, let's see, what's the time? Uh, depending on how quick the fire crews are here, she's either buried under ten tonne of rubble or they've just pulled her corpse out of the wreckage. You didn't. I invited you to this party, James, not her. This isn't some party. Of course it is. It's a celebration. One of us has finally found the thing that we've been looking for since those days at the orphanage. It's my party, and seeing as you still aren't here, I'm going to have to expand my guest list. What do you mean? The machine works, and the prism is powering it wonderfully. Why keep success to ourselves? It's time to invite the whole of Greenvale to my little shindig. We're going live, my friend. On every station in every home, the afterlife is on broadcast! Stop! Stop! They're all hearing it, James. Every radio in the town, all listening to the signal. No. No! Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. With special guest Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard. David Anthony Green, Harry McElroy, Edina Fisher Allen, and special guest star Michael Heath, with David Gardner as Carl Trevino. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping, and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi, this is Jamie Evans. And Benton Hodges. We're the producers of Haunted, the audio drama. We hope that you've been enjoying the show and we encourage you to keep track of our goings on by following our social media accounts. We've got a growing fan community who enjoy sharing theories, fan art and generally discussing the show. Plus, it's a great way for you to keep up with all the latest news about Haunted and our future projects. Follow us on Twitter at The Impala Films, on Instagram at Haunted Audio Drama, or one word, no capitals, or you can find us on Facebook at Impala Revolution. Enjoy the show and hunger for more, you can find us on Patreon at Impala Films, where you can donate to the show and get rewards such as early access to episodes and a behind-the-scenes podcast that goes through the myths and legends that inspired Haunted. Lastly, please consider leaving a review on your podcast app of choice. It really does help us reach more listeners. Thank you so much to every one of you for listening to our little show. It means so much to us. Yeah, the reception has totally blown us away. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. <laughs>